We wish you good morning, and it has been well over a year since we have welcomed people here in person for this service, and we are so excited. Uh, in addition to our uh, online worshipers, would you please stand with us as we sing our opening song? <laughs> Welcome you to worship this morning at Grace United Methodist Church. I'm excited to see you in person and to worship with our brothers and sisters who are worshiping with us at home. Um, I want to introduce myself if any of you are here for the very first time. I'm one of the pastors here and my name is Jessica. And my name is Drew and I get to be one of the pastors here. We are still in the season of welcoming Pastor Jessica, so would you join me in welcoming her? <laughs> I'm going to see how long I can milk it to make sure we clap for you as often as possible. <laughs> that was not part of the run-through, but okay. <laughs> this is the first Sunday uh, in well over a year that we've uh, been able to welcome folks to worship at this hour. 
And it's our first Sunday that we're doing what's called hybrid worship. So we have in-person worshipers here, online worshipers, wherever you are, all united in Christ to worship God, and we're thrilled to be able to do that together. At some point during worship, we do invite you to fill out a Connect card. So if you're online, wherever you're worshiping, there should be a link that you can use to fill out a Connect card at some point during worship. Here in person, you'll find that there is a blue card in the pew. You can use this to scan it with your, the camera on your phone to fill out an online Connect card. Or if you would prefer, you can use the paper Connect card and bring that with you forward for communion and leave it in the basket with any offering that you'd like to make today. But that is how we learn your name and pray for you by name. This is how you also add your joys and concerns to our church prayer list. So we do hope that at some point during worship, you'll use that Connect card so that we can stay connected. We are excited to be starting a new sermon series today called Good News for Anxious People. And I have to tell you, I've felt a little anxious today. <laughs> There's a lot of new things. Again, another Sunday when we're trying something new. We've had a lot of those in the last three or four months as we've started to open up again and a lot of newness over the last year. Uh, and so whatever kind of anxiety you've experienced over the last year, uh, we hope that this sermon series can bring you good news at a time when you need it. Let us pray. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong and nothing is holy, increase and multiply in us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may pass through temporal things and lose not eternal things. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our worship continues now with our summer hymn sing. I invite you to stand as you are able here in person and at home sing with us the first verse from three hymns that were selected by you as <laughs> favorites from this congregation to sing this summer. Let's stand and sing. <laughs>
page 344, for Lord, you have come to the lake shore. Scripture lesson this morning can be found in the Gospel of John, chapter 6. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, as we mentioned, this is a new sermon series. And it's going to follow John chapter 6 from here, from the first verse of the chapter all the way to the last verse of the chapter. And it's all about bread. But here at the beginning, it's not just bread, it's bread and water. The feeding of the 5,000 and the story of Jesus walking on the water. Let us pray. 
Almighty God, open our hearts and minds to receive your word this day. Your word written in the scriptures, your word proclaimed in the church, your word made flesh in Jesus Christ. Amen. It's been a few weeks since I preached on Sunday morning. I've missed it. But it's given me a chance to do a little bit of reading. I'm working my way through a big book by the Canadian philosopher Charles Taylor. It's called A Secular Age. It's like 800 pages, so I hope to finish it before the next pandemic. <laughs> Taylor's main thesis is that we are now officially living in a secular age in the West, an age when belief in a transcendent God or in anything beyond what we can see and feel is not just less popular, but actually more difficult than it used to be. 500 years ago, it was almost impossible to doubt the existence of God, but now it's almost impossible not to. It's what can make it hard for us modern people to believe in stuff like bread from heaven or walking on water. So we either deny it outright or we try to explain it away by calculating things like the calorie density of unleavened bread or the nocturnal viscosity of the Sea of Galilee. We seculars are conditioned against taking stories like these at their face value. Apparently, it used to be easier. It used to be that everybody believed. God was a given. But then, kind of because of the Reformation, but especially after the birth of liberal democracies, things kind of changed to where you could believe in God, but it was a private matter. It became a matter of choice. More recently, this belief as a matter of choice thing has resulted in people leaving church behind to search for God elsewhere, or to no longer search for a God who seems not to have been there in the first place. Now, Charles Taylor and others are saying that even us people in the church aren't so sure we believe all the time. In a secular age, whether we're outside the church or inside, we may all be anxiously wondering, is there something? Or is there nothing? And what does it mean for me? And it's bad timing, too, because we're in anxious times these days, times when we could use some good news to believe in, something to satisfy our hungry hearts. These two miracles called signs in the Gospel of John are presented side by side, two signs given to two different groups, those outside, the crowd, the masses, and those inside, the disciples. The crowd gets to taste and see this sign, this bread from heaven. Then the disciples are given a bonus sign, Jesus walking toward them on the water in the middle of a storm. Both are times when anxious people got good news. News of a God that discloses his own self to them, whose nature it is to come to us, to show up in the midst of our hunger and anxiety, our fear and our doubt in stormy, rising waters, in the valley of the shadow of death, here is a God who gets his feet wet, who comes to us in person and makes us to lie down in green pastures, personally stills the waters. Here is a God who knows what we need and shows up to get it to us, even if it means he has to put the bread in our mouths. I got a call this week from a friend from college. I've known him and his wife and their family since I was 19. I sang at his wedding. I officiated her brother's wedding. I had heard that her father, Dan, was sick. My friend said, hey, do you think you can come over? Dan's not doing well, and the family would really appreciate it if you could come and say a few words. As I arrived, Dan's wife met me in the driveway. It had been years since we had seen each other, and to my great pleasure, she said, I look great. <laughs> look, she said. Dan's not religious, you know that. He doesn't 
he wouldn't want anything like last rites. We're not Catholic. He's not really a believer. But the hospice people are telling us that he's near the end. And I just feel like it would help him if you would say a few words. Inside, they told me that he's basically unresponsive, but that yesterday he started saying that he was ready to go home. He wanted to go home, but he just couldn't find the door. He's not a religious man, but they noticed that he seemed kind of anxious, and they were too. And maybe if you could just say a few words, they said. Not meaning like religious words, but just tell him it's okay. Tell him he can go. I had brought my prayer book with me, but luckily it was pocket-sized. Dan, I said, trying to avoid religious language. It's me, Drew. Remember me? You were the first dad I ever played beer pong with in college. I stumbled through the encounter, eventually getting to the words that the family wanted. Dan, your kids want you to know that they love you. You had a hell of a run, and they've gotten more than enough happy memories to last them a lifetime. They promise that your grandchildren will remember you, and they want you to know it's okay for you to go now. We all started to cry a bit. I know you're not much of a churchgoer, Dan, but if you were, I'd promise you that you'll get to be with them again someday. All of us will. That line fell pretty flat. I guess what I mean to say, Dan, is you have nothing to worry about. It's okay. Don't be afraid. And for a moment, it seemed like his breathing changed. I said goodbye. We all wiped our tears and hugged, and I departed. And then within an hour, Dan was gone. On that day, when Jesus took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them, he was a living remembrance of the bread from heaven that came in the Exodus, heavenly bread given to the people when they needed it most. But as the next few weeks will illustrate, Jesus' breaking of the bread in John 6 is also an anticipation of the Eucharist, communion, which commemorates Christ giving himself up for us. For centuries, through cultural changes, the rise and fall of empires and civilizations, the church has always met, at least once a week, if not daily, with varying levels of belief in our hearts to come again to this table and receive this gift. We gather together and we say a few words. We take bread, we bless it, We break it, and we give it to one another. We've done it all these years because deep down we know we are all a bunch of anxious, hungry people living in the shadow of death with more questions than answers. But note that back in Galilee, and really any time Jesus shows up, what he gives is free. Regardless of whether the recipient believes. In fact, his recipients hardly ever believe until after they've received. And even then, they only half believe and plenty of them still doubt. This is good news for anxious people in a secular age like us. People like us who need someone to walk through the storm and get close enough for us to hear them say a few words. This is good news for people who like us, who need it right in front of our faces, who need it placed even into our mouths so that something can satisfy our hungry hearts in ways that are harder to deny than they are to question, in ways that even for a moment give us enough faith and hope and love to be at peace. I don't really know if any of the words that I said to Dan made any difference. 
but assuming that we are all a little or a lot like Dan. I'll end by saying a few words. Only this time, these words are not mine. These words are the Lord's. To one and all, he offers this invitation and promise. Take. Eat. It is I. Do not be afraid. I offer this to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our worship continues with a time of prayer, and that will be followed by the sacrament of Holy Communion. If you are worshiping with us at home, we want to in invite you to pray with us, to worship with us. Um, this might also be a good time to fill out your Connect card or make an online gift, um, or simply be still and experience God's grace and presence. Um, if and when you are worshiping with us in person, this is a table that is open to all. As we turn to, to God in prayer, I wanted to share with you that we received news this morning that our brother in Christ, Phil Lauer, passed away this morning. Um, and when we have more details about the funeral, we will share those with the congregation. But we want to definitely lift up that family and his spirit this day. Trusting in God's grace, our worship uh, continues with prayer and on behalf of of the church and of the world. And as we pray, you're welcome to mention your own prayers in your heart or aloud. And then when I say, Lord, in your mercy, you are invited to respond with the words, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Together, let us begin by praying for the church and for the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Together we pray for the nations and peoples of the world and of, for their leaders. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Together we pray for the concerns of this local community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Together we pray for those who suffer and those who are in trouble. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Together we pray for our friends, for our enemies, and for our families. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Together we pray for our own needs, which we bring to you, O oh God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Together we pray for the forgiveness of our sin and the sins of the whole world.
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sin through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Hear this good news, my friends. The Lord is faithful and true, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. In the name of Jesus Christ, your prayers are heard and your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. I invite you to stand as you're able for the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them, them up, up to, to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right to, to give, give our, our thanks, thanks and, and praise. Lord God, it is good and right for us to praise you because you have always loved us. From our creation, through our salvation, to this very day, even we, when we have failed to love you and failed to love our neighbors as ourselves, the scriptures declare to us that your love remained steadfast. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, Emmanuel the bread of life, God with us. Through his life of ministry, suffering, death, and resurrection, you have saved us by giving yourself to us. Through this act of love, you gave birth to your church, reconciling us into a new covenant, a new family, forgiving all our sin and ending all our divisions through your amazing grace. By this grace, we remember how on the night in which he gave himself up for us, the Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the supper, he took the cup, again giving thanks to you, he then gave it to them, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves, in praise and thanksgiving, as a holy and living sacrifice, in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, let us pray. Our Father, our Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread, bread and, and forgive us our, our trespasses. trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ, the bread of heaven. Take and eat the bread of life given as a sign and sacrament of our salvation. 
This is the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation, poured out to give life to our mortal bodies so that we may walk in grace and peace. You may be seated. Would those who are prepared to help serve come forward at this time? As they do, we want you to know that this is an open table, which means you don't have to be a member of this or any church to come and receive. All you need is to want to have this bread, to have it given to you for free. When you come forward, you'll be, able to, you'll be given a piece of bread, which you can then dip into the cup to receive both together. If you prefer, we have individual servings of the cup, the juice, if you want that. You're also welcome to spend some time at the kneeling rail. If you'd prefer just to have the bread, that's okay too. All of it is made available for you. And if you need gluten-free elements, let us know. We've got those available as well. This is bread from heaven. This is the body of Christ given for you. We invite you to come as you are called. Are you hurting and broken within, overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar the father's arms are open wide forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of jesus christ leave behind your regrets and stay Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes, a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, what a Savior! Isn't He wonderful? Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Bow down before him, for he is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Oh, what a Savior, isn't he one? Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. Bow down before him, for he is Lord of all. Sing hallelujah, Christ is risen. 
Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Bear your cross as you wait for the crown. Tell the world of the treasure you found. who would like to be served afterwards and didn't get to be served during worship, we're happy to do that. Just let us know. Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We invite you to stand and join us in our closing hymn, number 368, My Hope is Built. We are truly thankful that you were able to be with us in worship, whether you were here in person or worshiping online. We, uh, we really were glad that we got to worship together. If this was your first Sunday with us, we especially want to welcome you, and we're glad that you found your way to grace, and we hope that today was a blessing for you and yours. We know you'll want to know about ways to remain engaged with grace in the days ahead, and here are a couple of those. One opportunity is if you have not yet participated in Vacation Bible School, those 
the, all the content, the videos is online. You'll find it under the children's page of the website. I know my daughter, she's up at the top right. She had so much fun. It was awesome. That will be available till August 12th, so uh, please check that out. Another opportunity um, coming up is the Blood Drive that is happening on August 4th, and to date we have 27 Grace folks who are signed up for that, um, and so please go online if you can come that day and give blood. Um, the sign-up links can be found in the weekly emails or also on the website. We're thrilled that so many Grace folks are signed up for that, so thank you very much. Uh, it's not too late to join Pastor Jessica for a coffee chat. Uh, in her first weeks here as one of our pastors, she's uh, made herself available. The last one's this Thursday at the Starbucks on Liberia. Uh, that information's on the website and the Facebook page, but drop in and get to know Pastor Jessica. Finally, uh, we are doing a summer collection. Some years we've done a back-to-school drive. We've heard from schools, though, that they get lots of school supplies and they notice that some of the kids need some more basic stuff. And so we are getting stuff that's kind of like hygiene stuff for families that might need it. We're trying to get 60 of each of these items. So you can help us. You can drop off anything that you pick up uh, in the office Monday through Friday, 9 to 2, or bring it with you next Sunday so that we can support uh, local families in that way. Again, we are really glad that you were able to join us for worship uh, if you are online, make sure to fill out that Connect card. And folks here, if you've got a Connect card, you can pass it in the basket on your way out. But um, thanks for being with us. Now receive this final benediction. Go now as people of faith. A little faith, a lot of faith. No matter what, go trusting that the grace of God is yours and goes with you always. Go in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So oh.